Due to the explicit content, viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody, welcome back to the tutorial series. Today we're going to be basically putting all the mods that I use into our tutorial based game. So let's jump right into this. We have a lot to cover. GTA 4 first. And like I said, remember I have multiple ones. I have tutorial there. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to rename this guy uh, single player. And then tutorial, I'm going to rename him back to the normal GTA 4 because that's what we're using today. So with GTA 4, we have inside here, first things first, 1.0 D hotfix came out recently. And I'm going to show you what you can do um, to update that without having to completely install the whole thing once again. Okay, so I have the LCPD uh, first response 1.0D2 uh, manual install. That's the version I downloaded. That's the one you should download off of lcpdfar.com. Uh, I, I figured you guys from the last tutorials, you probably know how to go to lcpdfar.com and download lcpdfar itself. So make sure you choose the manual install if you're going to do it the way I'm doing it today. Um, what we have to do is basically just overwrite a lot of stuff. It's pretty straightforward, not too difficult. And uh, even though you may want to keep your INI file here, your lcpdfar.ini file, you want to um, overwrite it with the new... Actually, remember, let's put the... Old version on the right and the new version on the left. That's how we did it last time. We'll do it again this way. So first things first, what we need to do is go to the ENUS folder, uh, and there's a DLL file in there. So all you really have to do here is just copy this guy over and paste him in here like that and hit yes and do that for all the conflicts. Pretty simple to do. LCP to far, let's go ahead and um, take him, copy him over into your main directory, It'll say, do you want to mer you want to redo everything? Yes, for the next three conflicts. Bam. And then yes for the next 17. And then it's gonna move that 32.1 megabytes of uh, files over into your GTA 4 installation. So it'll be updated on the newest one. You can tell because when you open up the INI file, notice down here under main, you don't have a lot of the things that it adds in there when we run the diagnostics tool. We'll do that after we get everything all. Uh, everything else ready to go. So to make things a little easier, I'm just going to go ahead and open PC because uh, that's what we're going to do on this guy. And there's the LCPDFR. So I'm going to take him, copy him over into there, and we're going to update it. Yes, the next two conflicts is fine. Let's go back to the main directory once again. Uh, the scripts folder, let's just go ahead and copy that uh, LCPDFR loader.net.dll. Because remember, if they're a DLL, they go in the scripts folder. Uh, and we paste there. And yes, we want to copy and replace it. So we'll be on the newer version. And uh, now we can just hit advanced hook DLL all the way down to the uninstall and hold the shift key down and click uninstall. That'll select everything there. And let's just go ahead and hit control C for that. And right uh, click there in the main directory and hit paste. It'll say for the next 11 conflicts, yes, copy and replace them all. Beautiful. So now we are upgraded to 1.0D hotfix uh, one. So why we have that finished, let's go ahead and jump over and start getting some other stuff that I use. Um, main thing, a lot of people want to know how you install sirens. So let's let's just go ahead and, and do that. Um, we have a good master B siren here or master com B siren we can do there, but I don't need to do that. I will show you um, just exactly what it is. I use Danman 16s so that he sent me, but this is any um, siren you download has a horns.ivod uh, file, and I'm going to show you how we take care of that. Okay, let's go ahead and open up my G file here, and let's go to GTA 4 2014, and here's where I keep my Spark folder. This is what you have to have to run Spark. You have to have a folder with all this crap in there, and then we run the exe file from there. So let's go ahead and start the exe up. And we'll click on GTA 4, since that's the version I'm using. I'm not using EFLC, and I'm not going to support it. I'm not going to help you guys with EFLC because I don't have it, and that's the reason why I can't give advice on how to do things in it. So if we come down here, you see I have everything pretty much open from previously doing a lot of different modding. And if we come down here to the, um, when we go to the PC side of things, you'll see here under PC, bam, there it is, we've got... Uh, all the way down here under audio, if you open up the audio, you have SFX. We'll click on the SFX, 
and then have a look see over here. We want to look for the resident.rpf file, and there it is right there, the resident RPF. Let's hit edit. Once we have him open, we can click on resident, and in here, oh, lo and behold, there is the horns.ivod. So if we want a new uh, horn, let's just import a file. Same thing. Uh, my GTA 4 is fine. We'll just do the mastercom B. Um, this is the uh, Dan Man's uh Mastercom B, so he has a lot of different options. We'll just go with Will. Two with Horn is fine. In here, we'll find the Horns.ivod. If you would have downloaded a, you know, a Federal Signal Rumbler, a Wayland 295, any siren you have, it's going to come to you as a Horns.ivod file. So we're just importing this in through Spark as such. So we just click on the Horns.ivod, hit open. We know that it overrode it because look, it's now blue. And then we hit save. We hit OK. Awesome. Not much else to really do from there, but we can go ahead and close that guy out. And let's hit save on Spark, just in case. Uh, we're going to leave Spark running just in case I have to use it again. So, and I'm pretty sure we will. So let's go ahead and move along to the next thing on the list. And what is going on here? I did not want to edit anything. I wanted to um, get to my list of stuff here. Okay, we've done that. We've already covered ELS version 8. Uh, we've... We've already shown you how to install a ENB. Uh, Breathalyze your script and policing script by Braveheart. This is going to be one we're going to use here. So to, to speed things along here, I am not going to, um, I'm not going to, uh, you know, extract every single little thing. You, you should know how to extract folders by now. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this guy and we'll install it. All right, I just extracted the policing script into its own folder, and we have the INI and the .NET.DLL. Remember, DLLs, they're pretty much going to just go into our scripts folder, so let's do that really quick. Uh, and in here in the scripts, you see we've already installed the tow service, but this one's going to be the policing. So let's go ahead and copy that, those guys over and hit paste. Wham. We can open up the INI folder, and you can make everything your own custom way you like. Turn certain things on, turn them off. Call distance, I like this to be close because if they're too far, then they're going to send you to a different island. Uh, we can save that. And brotherizer uh, settings, if I'm in the United States, I want the U.S. version. And the limit I want is 0 0.08, so 0 0.08. And now you'll be on the Imperial, or the, whatever you want to call it, the American version of uh, all of that. So it's a great uh, script, and that's, it's very easy to install. Most of these scripts that are .dlls require the INI with them, and you just dump them into your scripts folder. Pretty simple. What's next? Okay, next up, we've got the indicator script. So let's run over here to LCPDFR and grab that really quick, and we'll install that. Okay, indicator script is uh, unpacked, and inside there's another folder called indicator script. So we'll open him up, and here your uh, information is advanced hook.dll and scripts. Do not, do not overwrite your advanced hook DLL. It came with LCPDFR, and if you're running LCPDFR 1.0D hotfix or whatever, you have the newest version of advanced hook. If you go and throw this indicator scripts advanced hook in there and override it, it's not going to work. And what I mean is LCPDFR could have unexpected crashes and all these different uh, errors because it's using an older version of advanced hook. Make sure you do not do anything with that. But remember, there's a readme file in there if you want to read it. So inside the scripts, simple, indicator.ini and indicator.net.dll. Remember DLLs? They go into the scripts folder. You're right. So we paste them over there. Check out the INI. And enabled means true, 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 which means if you want the left, your left blinker to work, that is the way. And then there's your key map, left, right, UI, or whatever you want to do. You can customize it the way that you want to. So let's see what's next on the list. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the police helper. It is the most... Uh, most used thing that I use in uh, LCPD FAR episodes. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see here. BDH Police Helper. We'll hit download. And we'll download 1.121B, which is the beta, which is the newest version. Always want the newest version. But if you have problems with it, you can always revert back and use the older version. It is downloaded. Let's go ahead and run over here. Okay, so I extracted the police helper 1.121B. Let's open that up. And in here is everything you see. There's a readme. If you read the readme, it'll tell you, turn, copy everything from the zip file and throw it into your scripts folder. So we're going to do exactly that over here to the scripts. 
and we will copy all of this stuff over and paste it uh, just like that. So now we have, we have the police helper and in there you can, you know, make sure you have everything. You can read over this and learn all the keys for it as well as uh, make things um, customizable to your liking. So let's see what's next on the list. It's going to be the towing script. We have we did that that one time. I showed it already, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so next up is the Chikamaru Real Traffic. This one is going to give you a Russian website, but don't fret. We have our nice little uh, thing here. We'll hit paste and go to that. So here it is in Russian. And look here, you got RUS in English. So if you don't know Russian... You can click on ENG there and go to the English version and look down here. Here is the download uh, full uh, uh, link there to download the file. There it is, an RAF. We can hit or an RAR. Why did I say RAF? I don't know. RAR. We'll hit download to that, and it should start your download, and there it goes. So now we'll have the real traffic loader looking good there. Let's go ahead and back to this guy in our downloads. There's the real traffic. Let's go ahead and extract him. And there it is right there. And inside of that little folder, here's all your information. Do not put this in there. That's his. I, I don't know why people do this. Um, throw command lines because that can really screw your installation up. Um, mainly, it, it changes how um, it does certain options in your options that you already have. But you can also override them through various ones. We went over that before in a previous um, uh, a previous lesson. So we don't need to do any of that. But inside of Chikmaru... Real traffic, you can see there's command line TXT. We already have our own, so we don't need to touch that. I don't want to touch anything else. We want to make sure there's already not already a MSVRC in here already. And if there isn't, which we just checked there, we will put it in there. So we'll take this, we'll copy them over. And that's mainly because of that whole MSVRC or VCR um, 1000 DLL issue. Uh, some... 64-bit uh, applications, or actually, just some programs can't find that DLL in your main uh, systems 32 or SysWow or what I've I don't know the, the complete logistics of it, but I I just understand why it's in there. But anyway, you can open the README and here it tells you right there. Just uh, need to throw it into your uh, ASI in the TXT and blah 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 to your main GTA 4 folder. Well, we're not going to do that with the command line. We're not. We already moved the v MS VCR 100D in there. So we'll just take the ASI, we'll copy it directly into our main directory of GTA, and now we have the working uh, real traffic. I run mine at five uh, density in your settings, so it you know it's kind of whatever you want to do as long as uh, uh, you don't crash your game doing it because you know uh, a lot more vehicles be more vehicles in memory, which can cause game crashes. Back to something else to do. Let's do the real gun sounds mod. A lot of people like my um, gun sounds. And I'm going to show you how to install these. These are fun to install. You just use uh, Spark to do it, actually. So we go to the Media Fire link here, and it's 16 megabytes. We'll start the download. I'll go ahead and close him out, and we'll wait for that guy to finish up like that. There we go. It's done. So we'll head back over here into our downloads. And there's the real Gun Sounds mod. We can extract him out. And under there, we have another folder. And here we go. We have the backup, which is the original weapons IVOD. Looks familiar. Yes, this is very simple to install. And then there's the actual mod. If you read the meet, read me, it'll tell you how to do it. But it's just like installing a siren. Remember, once we're here under PC sound effects and spark, and we go down here to resident.rpf, and we edit that, and we open them up. Remember, there was the horns.ivod. Well, looky here. We have the weapons as well. So all we have to do is import and we go to the downloads and we go inside of the gun sounds and the mod and there's the IVOD and open it and look, it turned blue. We hit save. We hit okay. We close that guy out. We hit save again on the on spark again. And let's go ahead and minimize that for now. Keep in mind whenever you're doing any modding with spark, open like I have right here. If you accidentally leave this open and you start GTA, it will not load any traffic, will not load any vehicles. If you ever join, uh, jump into GTA and everything's missing, nothing makes sense, check and make sure you don't have Spark running in the background because that will make sure that you have nothing when you start the game. So let's go back. 
uh, to another one. Uh, the trainer, we've already installed that before. We don't have to do that. Let's do the Score Pro Break Mod. What is that, you ask? It's pretty simple to install, uh, but it is the um, it is the mod that I use that whenever you come to a stop, it, it will automatically put the brake lights on for you. So if you're at a you know at a stop light, it'll automatically put the lights on, uh, the brake lights on for you. So here is all the description of all that, and here are the download links for it. So we can do GTA Four mods. Dot com. We've used it before. Let's do it again. We'll hit download now. Bam. It downloads. And anything you download off of GTA 4 Mods will have a bunch of numbers in front of it. So don't be freaked out about that. So let's go to our downloads. There there is right there. Extract him out. There she goes. Score Pro. Brake Lights Mod. Very simple to do. You can read these. Um, you can Here's the copy content in your game folder. Score Pro in information. We don't care about any of this shit. Here's a key list, which is kind of nice to have if, if you do any other kind of uh, modding in a uh, INI file. That's kind of nice to have as a key list. Um, but uh, copy content to game folder. Open him up. Now, remember, ASIs go in your main directory and DLLs uh, would go into your script. So very simple. It's just like the um, uh, the traffic, uh, the real traffic one, Chick Maru. Just like that. It's an ASI. So all we do is we copy both of those guys over and paste them in there. And we can open the INI, and here it tells you right there. Hold Control shift f 6 for one second to disable or enable the mod. So if you don't like it, it's annoying you, you can always hit Control shift f 6 to turn it off, or you can just remove it. You know, it, it, it's it's your, your call. I like it personally. Sometimes it's annoying if you get back into a car and you're trying to pursue somebody, it'll hit the brakes on you. So that kind of sucks, but... Other than that, it's a it's a neat mod. I, I enjoy it. Okay, guys, I think that's going to do it for this one. Um, if you look here, we have the Road Textures one is the last one to use, but that's such a big download that we'll have to save that for a separate um, uh, installation. Uh, in inside of that installation, uh, or if you down if you do download that file, there's a great readme in there and tells you exactly how to install it. Um, but if you guys really want me to make another video on how to do it, I can do it. I can go go ahead and download it. It's just a big file, so that's why I'm not going to do it today. Hopefully, this will get you guys a little further uh, in GTA 4 and LCPDFR and the, the common mods that are out there and the ones that I use. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments, and uh, feel free to uh, request a different tutorial, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.